So you guys break out them capes, break out those superhero masks because we are talking about the 10 greatest comic book movies of the year, or at least my 10 favorites, you all. And there have been a lot. Look, almost every month we've had some kind of superhero media, whether it's movies, TV shows, new comics. There are always going to be exciting new developments, shows, movies, news, everything in superhero media. And my channel is one that just loves this medium because guys, I grew up with comic books. I love comic comic books as you can see on the back of my wall two of my favorite heroes are right behind me in every single video so i am so excited to do this top 10 comic book movies of the year you all if you're new to the channel welcome in my name is leo rydell and this is geekly goods where we talk the latest in movies tv with a little sprinkle of anime in there as well but guys let's dive into this starting with number 10 which is technically an anime i know y'all are gonna get on me for this one but my number 10 is my hero academia world heroes mission seriously enjoyed this movie every my hero academia movie has been a hitter so far my hero academia world heroes mission is no different we get this cool new character roadie soul to follow along with deku on his journey and he learns more and more about the character throughout i do think i could have probably ranked this one a little higher but the other nine that i have are just ahead of it look i loved my hero academia world heroes mission i just don't think it stands up to the second movie in the series heroes rising heroes rising was just mind-blowingly good and i don't think any of the movies are gonna get to that caliber again so it kind of takes away from them but let's be real that super move at the end of my hero academia the movie was so good look our boy izuku midoriya is growing up every single day and i love seeing him pull off the amazing feats he does and this time he did it alone you guys so great great movie Coming in at number 10 doesn't mean it's a bad movie. I just got nine ahead of it. So let's move on to number nine with Zack Snyder's Justice League. If this had not been four hours, I think this movie would have moved up in my ranks probably three or four points. But man, that four hour runtime brings it down a bit. But getting a movie that corrects the mistakes of the 27 Justice League is something that I think we all wished for. And while we all weren't as hardcore with the petition as some others, we all still wanted a good Justice League movie. I mean, come on, we're seeing four, five good Avengers movies come out without a good Justice League. So I thought that this was an amazing installment. I thought giving these characters a lot more time to flesh out their stories were amazing. Look, the cyborg and flash stories and scenes were incredible, especially the flash reversing time. Great graphics, awesome visuals, way better characterizations than the 2017, way better. So I love that we got this version of the Justice League and not that 2017 Justice League that we just pretend doesn't even exist, y'all. Let's move on to number eight, which is a TV show, the first TV show on the list, Superman and Lois, you all. Now, if you know me, I have been talking up this series so much. I loved Superman and Lois. I thought it was a fantastic series beginning to end with great characters, and it blended a little bit of that emotional story that we had in Smallville into this movie. Not that it follows Smallville at all, but it just blends and takes those emotional pieces and moments and elements and puts them into this story. We get two different stories, really, following Superman, his powers, and also him fighting fighting crime, along with following his sons through everyday teenage life. Gotta love the blend here, gotta love the characters. Jordan, Jonathan love the twins, and I just love this family of Superman, his sons, and Lois, guys. It is incredible. This is my favorite Lois Lane ever, ever. Sorry, Amy Adams, sorry, previous Lois Lanes. Sorry, she is my favorite one. She has the tenacity and the great energy that the reporter Lois Lane should have and she goes in the end for every story. Absolutely love this Lois Lane. And if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. We've got a review and a reaction coming up on the channel in January. So be there or be swear y'all. Moving on to number seven. And again, one that people are probably gonna be a little shocked is this low, but at number seven, I am going with Shang-Chi. Loved Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I especially love the first half where we get all this non-stop hand-to-hand -hand combat. We get these really cool acrobatics throughout scenes and we get these long take fights where things are not cut, not interfered. We get to actually see the punches and blows land, y'all. Like literally, this is Marvel's staple martial arts movie and they do an incredible job. The problem I have is that Ta Lo kind of comes in and takes over the second half of the movie and there's not too big a problem with that. 
But man, I miss the hand to hand combat. I was discussing with my boy at Marcellus Durden on Twitter, Loretto. I was discussing that it would have been cool. And he brought up this idea as well. If Shang-Chi and Win Wu would have just went hand to hand at the end, I think that it just got so mystical and so CG heavy that it didn't kill the movie whatsoever, but it just took away from the cool hand to hand action in the beginning, which is some of Marvel's best since Daredevil. But I love Shang-Chi as a character. I thought the cast did an amazing job. Simu Liu, looking forward to seeing more of him and Aquafina in the future, you guys. So definitely had to get this on the list. But going with number six, and this is just a pinch ahead a pinch ahead I'm going with the Suicide Squad the Suicide Squad was my favorite DC film of the year I thought that it was a lot of fun Idris Elba was great look I'm not looking forward to the Peacemaker show, but I love John Cena as a Peacemaker. I thought he did an incredible job. I thought he was funny with the pack of the Suicide Squad characters. Not sure I'm really looking forward to his show much. It doesn't look that funny, but man, him riffing and bouncing off of Idris Elba and other characters in the cast were hilarious. Daniela Melchior, a big underrated performance. I thought she was great as Ratcatcher. She was truly the heart of the group. And man, Polka Dot Man had to go and die like that on us but such a fun movie it's crass it's bloody it's action-packed and look i know that margot robbie's role was very dialed down this time as harley quinn but i thought she was a lot of fun and i loved getting to see her take out all those soldiers in the compound where she was being held great movie i'm so looking forward to seeing it again i think it's still on hbo max so you might be able to catch it now if you haven't caught it already but absolutely fantastic all right guys we are now halfway through the list and we are at our number five y'all so who's gonna split the list huh huh it's definitely a marvel project guys i gotta admit i'm a huge marvel nerd but i love me some dc too no offense i'm hoping that they actually really break down those barriers next year and just get into a competition with marvel because they got a lot coming but let's go to a marvel tv show this time with loki you guys loki had so many implications for the multiverse for timelines the way that the mcu is going to handle time in that finale i thought it was grand i thought they paid off their finale the best out of any of the shows and i thought what a great way to introduce jonathan major's character here give us this variant of king the conqueror he who remains i thought that was such a brilliant way to end loki and to just Give us this madness that's going to happen in Multiverse of Madness in Loki Season 2. Man, and Loki and Sylvie had some of the best chemistry between the duos. There's only one duo that I liked more than them, but they are incredible together. Love them playing off one another, and I'm looking forward to Loki Season 2 so much, you guys. So let's move on to number four, which will be a shocker for many because this was Marvel's Last Jedi. This was Marvel's most divisive film probably ever. Because I think a lot of us can agree with Iron Man 3 and some of the lower quality, lower tier, Thor Dark World, Marvel movies. But this was one that I think our heads split on a lot of us. It was Eternals, you all, which I absolutely love. Look, Gemma Chan, Angelina Jolie, Richard Madden, all kinds of casts in this movie. Brian Tyree Henry. Everybody that was in this movie, in my opinion, did a fantastic job, and I loved following this dysfunctional family that was Eternals. I thought that the exposition got a little heavy sometimes, but I loved it. Other than that, I loved the visuals. I loved the deep human story that we could connect with. I love how Marvel took these gods and made them connective and made them so emotional and human. It was such a beautifully well-told story. I loved it, you guys, and I thought it was well acted. Athena's my girl. I can't wait to see it again when it comes to Disney Plus this next 2022 year. I'm really looking forward to it, guys. So let's move into our top three, y'all. Top three. That's important, ain't it? We got three left to go. So let's go ahead and hit the gas with our number three, Invincible. Wow, was I impressed by the animation, the voice acting, but not only the qualities around it, the actual story itself was absolutely captivating. I loved getting to follow Mark, get his powers for the first time, develop, then learn about his father at the end of season one. I thought, what a cool 
crazy, amazing story to basically have this Justice League that gets taken out by Superman and a detective story going on behind the scenes of finding the killer behind the Justice League and the whole time it's actually Superman himself. So crazy good show. I love the characters, love the chemistry. I love Mark as a hero. I'm looking forward to his development and for me, this puts us in the perspective of a new superhero. We get to step right into the shoes of the abilities. So it gives a little bit of an audience perspective of how it is to get responsibilities with powers and being on a team but not on a team and also try to handle superhero life and teenage life i love this story so far and i'm so looking forward to more look the animation's great the voice cast outstanding you have some great cameos throughout the season as well so great 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 show all right guys down to our top two and come on i can't have my top two without number two the greatest marvel television series behind daredevil for me WandaVision. I love WandaVision so much, you guys. WandaVision was full of theories, mysteries, and so much craziness every single week. I loved the custom intros, the music, and Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen were just incredible together. I'm so glad that we get, we're getting some Emmy love, some nomination love, because those two definitely deserve it. Katherine Hahn, seriously, as Agatha Harkness was great, and she won some awards across the board, so I'm so happy for her because she deserved it. Guys, this was such a great show. I love the mystery unraveling into Wanda's grief and just where it took the series. Yes, the ending wasn't as strong as Loki was, but man, I loved it, you guys. I loved everything about it. The music, the characters, the abilities, Wanda Maximoff becoming the Scarlet Witch. That for me was the only uh, actual end episode that I needed, to be honest. I loved it, guys. Great conclusion, great show. Honestly, one I watched probably far too much. I, I actually love the sitcom vibe that they brought with the first like four or five episodes. I loved it, man. Look, I was sitting back enjoying it, feeling like, man, we in an episode of Full House this week. We in an episode of Bewitched. Like, man, it was just so cool getting to get those sitcom vibes and showing that Marvel can do something completely different and still bring us all back. Now, number one, I don't think anybody's surprised. Look at my hoodie, guys. I'm going with Spider-Man No Way Home as number one. With great power must also come great responsibility. That was a fantastic movie, and you can't tell me anything different. Spoiler warning, spoiler warning, final spoiler warning. We get three Spider-Men. This is the dream come true that we were all looking forward to. We wanted our three Spider-Men, Toby, Andrew, and Tom, and we got all three of them on screen together what a dream come true and they had incredible chemistry together but not only that you get great villains back willem dafoe as green goblin alfred molina as doc ock jamie fox as electro thomas hayden church as sandman and uh, reese iffens excuse me as lizard crazy good lineup of the cast and i love the villains i loved dafoe seriously it was like each of them stepped out of the end of their own movies and they brought that energy back but defoe easy standout i would nominate him for supporting actor in a heartbeat so man i'm hoping he's coming for an oscar somehow not this i mean he was in nightmare alley he was in a couple other movies this year our man been busy and working so let's hope he gets some kind of recognition for that but you all thank you so much for tuning in to my top 10 comic book movies and tv shows of 2021 please let me know down in the comments what are your favorites because guys this is like the genre of my channel. To be honest, I cover all things geek here. Marvel, DC, movies, TV shows, Cobra Kai, but man, superhero media is like the meat of my channel and I love talking super book, super, super books, superhero, comic books, TV shows, and movies with you guys. So if you're new to the channel, hit that big red subscribe button. Tell me how I did and drop your list down below and let us know your top 10 of the year. Guys, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I know I've said it like 50 times and we will see you next time. I'm Geekly Goods.